look, a harvested pumpkin. <laughs> this was on the yellowing vine in the middle of the patch. It's very, very small. You can see my, my hand there. Um, I'd say probably a pound, maybe two pounds. Um, let's see how it's doing. It seemed kind of wet when I took it out of the garden, but yeah, it's firm. It's firm. It'll last till Halloween. Uh, nice pie pumpkin. So that is our first harvest. And uh, yeah, now off to the garden. Let's see if I can zoom in here. Whoop, zoomed out. That's going to be our second harvest there. That's a uh, cargo. I think the first one was a cargo too. Um, this is much larger. This is about the size a uh, little bit bigger than a basketball. Uh, it is turning orange. And one thing I see in a lot of videos, um, people seem to believe that the pumpkin will keep growing once it starts turning orange. It won't. Uh, you might as well harvest it when you see orange starting on the pumpkin um, because it's not going to grow anymore. It's just ripening. And leaving it in the garden too long after it ripens invites rot and all kinds of other problems like that so uh, and insects so you want to get it out of the garden as fast as you can when it starts ripening over here I think this is a Cronus Let's see yeah that's a Cronus and that thankfully is not ripening um, I don't know why I'm so alarmed at the ripening because there we go. it's the first of August and a lot of people in our pumpkin group um, Backyard Pumpkins Growers Society on Facebook look us up um, a lot of people in that group already have several pumpkins sitting in storage Anyway, over here, those are uh, lettuce seeds, <laughs> kind of like dandelion seeds. Uh, I let the, de the volunteer lettuce go to seed, so I'll have some more free lettuce next year. And over here, that is a watermelon. Jump the fence, and it is now producing a watermelon, so hopefully we'll have one watermelon this year. Over here we've got our butternut squash. These vines I wouldn't call them really healthy but they're not getting a lot of sun and I think the soil here is bad. Um, I'm still hoping for at least one squash by the end of the season. And growing among the squash are my volunteer tomatoes that come up every year in this garden. And of course vines. Boy I hate those vines. There we go. Let's get rid of the vines there so we won't strangle the tomatoes. Teachers are back at the little school across the street. Uh, they've been drifting back since the second week of July. So uh, school is coming up in about three weeks. So we'll be back to our daily noises and disruptions and inability to get out of the house at 3.30 p.m. Uh, but that's what you get when you live across from a school. You also get a nice place to drop off excess pumpkins, so uh, I'm not complaining. Okay, over here, that very dark pumpkin, I don't know if I'm even, looks like I've got it, there we go. That very dark pumpkin there, excuse my shaky hands, is a red warty thing. And that is going to Donna if she is watching. Um, if it doesn't rot, because I've found they get all the way to the ripening point and then they rot all of a sudden. So, it's a little upsetting. And we do have a start of powdery mildew, so I'm going to step up the green cure applications. Uh, 
just sort of slow it down so we have a little bit of a longer season because I think because I've got way too many vines out here there hasn't been a great deal of production. We should have more pumpkins than we have. That is a racer volunteer and over there if you can see it. I don't know if you can. Yep, Cronus. That's the biggest Cronus right there. The hatch has about two more two more weeks to uh, really produce nice sized pumpkins. After that they'll be small and they'll ripen very quickly and you get a bunch of pie pumpkins. So uh, I think there's a pumpkin starting here. This is a racer plus or a racer vine. Um, well, I saw it this morning. Our tomatoes are ripening, and I think once those ripen, that'll be it for the season. Carrots still growing. They grow very slowly for me. I usually don't harvest before September. Um, yeah, okay. Whoop. There we go. As you can see, we're, we've got a, a sunflower opening. That's the one that stopped turning last week. Um, the rest of them are not turning that well either. That one is right there, but the one up there has kind of stopped. So. What's going to happen now is the bud's going to keep on growing and then it'll burst open. That's a good nine feet tall, that big one up there. And uh, my volunteer down here got eaten. I think a deer has been walking past here at night and, and lopping things over because uh, I don't think a squirrel could have done that without dragging the whole plant down. So, uh, yeah, I'm not going to see what kind of sunflower that was unless it sends up other shoots. And the corn's going to be short, like I said last week. It's called candy corn. Um, it is tasseling. And even though corn does not need bees to be pollinated, we have sweat bees all over. I don't have any in the frame right now, but they like corn and they crawl all over the tassels. And here's another... That looks like a cargo, and that's growing in the corn. And here are our four little Russian mammoth sunflowers that they're about five and a half feet tall now. I didn't think they'd get that tall, but uh, they got eaten. And they got eaten again this past week, by probably by the deer. But they are sending up lots of Lots of secondary buds. So they will not be the majestic nine, ten footers, but they will be, uh, they will give us some flowers. Here's my compost. <laughs> um, yeah, like I said, uh, not a whole lot of production this year. There are maybe nine or ten pumpkins out here, uh, but that's not a lot considering we have something like 30 vines. Uh, the next two weeks are make or break. This is zone 5B, so normally we have frost by oh, sometime early in October, sometimes even late in September. And uh, of course the weather's been cool. It's been in the 70s most of the time, and that's not conducive to real enthusiastic growth in a garden. And it's also been dry uh, and I've been having to water plants and the problem with watering plants, uh, garden plants, is that they just do not respond as well to watering with city water as they do to you know nature watering them. Uh, that looks like a hmm either a cargo or a racer down there. 
Hmm. Yeah. Not a real thrilling week in the garden, I'm afraid. Okay, well, interesting bug there. Damselfly, I guess? Hmm. We have a lot of those because we have a lot of mosquitoes. But anyway, that's the garden for this week. And uh, I'll see you next week.